those of you here in the paddock listening in and for all of you tuning in live from around the world, howdy from Houston, Texas. It is opening weekend for the 2024 U.S. Pro Kart Series and after some heavy rain showers last night, a very slick morning warm-up session is underway, kicking things off with the youngest superstars, the Micro Swifts, and this track absolutely drenched right now, Caleb. They had the dry, uh, dryers to try and move some of the major standing water sections, uh, at least across the surface, but quite a bit of uh, rain hit through uh, overnight here in New Caney. And uh, as the track is slowly heating up, it'll take probably the entire round of this morning warps to get us back to uh, at least dry tire conditions uh, for the first main event. Yeah, correct. I mean, uh, we're so used to seeing a lot of puddling around this place, right? In turn number one, one of the biggest places uh, that puddles. And it's probably going to stay here even for some of the main events, even some of the earlier ones. So uh, it's going to be something to look out for uh, when we get to main event racing. But like you said, right, it's going to take every single class to go through and try and, uh, try and move all those puddles out of the racetrack. And it won't really uh, change too much on the driving line. Uh, with how flat out turn number one is to get over to the uh, setup for turn number two, by yourself, it's not a big issue where that puddle typically lines up. It's at the end of the front straight away past the start finish line but like you said it'll be thing uh, very interesting when we get to those last chance qualifiers that immediately follow the morning warm-up session of if that inside lane gets crowded into the wetter part of the racetrack uh, and uh, takes about three corners to kind of dry those tires back off so we might see uh, a bit of carnage to start the last chance qualifiers more than to be expected which we expect quite a bit because only the top two will transfer out of the 20 plus that are trying to fight their way into a main event starting spot there's a close look at what the drivers are dealing with here this morning. You can also see with that close-up of the racetrack, all of the rubber marbles, as they're called, off the line and how treacherous it would be if you do get pushed out to that outer part of the surface. So uh, that's going to make morning warm-up very, very interesting as we slowly uh, keep our eyes on the likes of Easton Kubinski and others trying to navigate uh, how this racetrack is. There's a look at the Jamaican sensation, Zane Burgess in the number 55 Sodi cart. Uh, they've been uh, hot and cold on where his speed has been, but a clean run, avoiding uh, all the chaos. And in fact, in that uh, first heat race, playing it perfectly to get the heat race win has put him in a fantastic starting spot for today from third on the grid. They're still looking for more uh, single lap pace as the run gets on later into uh, each session, mainly the second half uh, of each heat race they felt like was a weak point. But right now, it is a driver's racetrack with how damp it is uh, for all of these young drivers. And this is great development conditions, but it is far from ideal compared to uh, all the other sessions that were completely in the drive from Thursday afternoon onwards this weekend. First time many of these drivers have probably driven this place with anything other than uh, a hot and rubbered up uh, surface. Yeah, definitely right. So uh, it's going to take a while for that track to clear up. You know, the sun's still not fully out uh, yet. You see it, uh, you know, uh, coming up in the background uh, there uh, throughout the uh, back straightaway. Uh, but as we get going uh, throughout the day, it's going to warm up. And uh, we are in Houston, Texas. We're set for a very, very humid day of racing. So uh, we'll uh, let you know how the times are here in just a few moments of how everyone's stacking up so far in this uh, morning warm-up session. Um, and uh, Micro Swift will be the first. We'll bring you all of the morning warm-ups here before we get into last chance qualifiers and then main events. All the racing action, again, will be exclusive to KC Premium members, so make sure that you are subscribed. Uh, and uh, for everyone else uh, here that's continuing to follow along, make sure to like, comment, and share uh, all of the action that is coming your way here from uh, Houston. A little bit of carnage down at the end of the back straightaway. Two drivers turned around right there. Uh, right at the start of turn number six. And it looks like they're all able to get back going, including the 97 Iron Rock Motorsports Machine of uh, Victor Gus Wunderl. So uh, we'll uh, get you the times here in a few moments as it slowly populates for morning warm-up. For now, uh, just uh, getting everything, uh, hopefully, uh, on the cart and testing any of those changes last night to make sure nothing breaks because you're definitely not going to get an accurate read of what the track will look like. This place will dry up pretty quick in 90% of uh, uh, the line. It's really just the end of the front stretch. And I will say the track crew did a fantastic job of clearing out that massive puddle because we'll see it when we head down to turn number one as we follow the 34 car uh, towards the first corner. The inside of the racetrack typically is where that puddle is. There's still a little bit of spray uh, right at the end of the front straightaway, but not a ton. Uh, I saw uh, Chuck Frank out there with the blower yeah. right before we got underway, and he was able to push a lot of that puddle across the racetrack, and that's definitely helped uh, things a bit here for morning warm. So Easton Kubitsky, quickest at the moment, 
with a very wide spread uh, of laps so far. Yeah, a, a very, very wide spread as these drivers, you know, uh, just trying to get all those little gremlins out of the go-karts, making sure everything's on tight because when we go later today, it's going to be all about main event racing, and that's the 66 there. That's uh, Mazakulo who's off the racetrack, uh, currently four. So that's going to end Mazakulo's uh, warm-up session here early in this one. Uh, so unfortunate uh, there uh, for, uh, for Anthony Mazakulo. Uh, he's not going to be able to finish this one out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a widespread as these drivers, you know, just try and make sure that everything's good, warm themselves up mentally, and get themselves ready for main event action uh, later today, because this is when uh, the racing counts, and this is when you get the hardware.
K100 Jr. now on the racetrack, second uh, of the warm-up sessions. We're watching Alexander Vanjev, Derek Wargo and company. They have been near the top of the boards in the uh, outlaps, but uh, now it's starting to change. Remy Andretos a little further back on the Sodi Racing USA machine has actually gone the fastest so far in the warm-up session, but again, it is uh, completely blind for everyone of what the track's going to look like later on today. Going out on the wet tires here just to try and get a gauge of uh, how they're going to do. You can see at least uh, a couple of drivers further down on the leaderboard time-wise that either did not go out uh, or have uh, uh, opted to not go out for the warm-up here this morning. Now, uh, for KA100 Jr., it is uh, one long session, but they're still split in two groups for warm-up, so I believe they'll go out in two separate runs. Here's a look at Remy. Uh, Andretos on the 878, or no, actually that's going to be maybe Luke Tall uh, on the Sodi machine. So Remy in the 832, there we go. A good look at those MG wet tires working pretty good for the Sodi car driver out of the Northeast. Uh, and he is at a 66.340. We are way off on uh, where we would expect to be normally in the dry. So going to be a, a damp warm-up that, I again, the fact that only 12 carts have hit the racetrack here for this session is not a surprise at all, Caleb. You look at uh, the race day here, unless you're really trying to make sure that your parts are all good or from a driver development side you want to try and, uh, you know, push your kid to, to learn a little bit in these conditions, you're not going to really learn anything uh, of what the racetrack's going to look like for your main. Now, that said, for the cage in your last chance qualifier, being at, uh, only an hour away, that might be a decent reading. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, right, because uh, um, that race said not too far away at the moment. So uh, for all those drivers that are going to find themselves in the LCQ and have to, you know, see what they need to do, uh, either setup-wise to try and get themselves into the show later today. So it's really, you know, just uh, a learning session for, for some of the juniors. Uh, we're, 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 like you said, right, only two will transfer uh, to the show. 23 will line the grid for the K Junior Last Chance Qualifier uh, 17 in the K100 Senior last chance qualifier to try and race their way into the main la uh, later on this afternoon. There is a bit of a break after the last chance races before we get to the finals, but uh, we're gonna go straight into uh, the LCQs following all of the warm-up sessions. Uh, Remy still quickest here at a 66.340, I believe, um, and uh, hasn't really gone too much faster. He's finally started to plateau a bit last time by a 66.55. Uh, Alexander Vanchev, who sits uh, at a 66.42, just about a three-quarter tenth uh, margin off of the quick time, didn't go faster either. So uh, while they've found the limit early, the track is not progressing, I think, as quickly as some may have expected it to. Now, the sun is starting to shine, but we're forecasted for overcast skies for most of the day. The rain was threatening in the forecast up until really this morning. I think a lot more people would have anticipated uh, a wet final, uh, but I think we're probably just going to see uh, the track at its wettest right now and maybe just some damp last chance qualifiers where you'll have to decide whether or not you go to uh, your sticker tires that you've been saving for the main, put on the wets, uh, or for some that are really risky, try and run on their scuffs. Tyrone Kemper Jr. there, we just followed uh, going through uh, on uh, the uh, time charts. Uh, he's down in the fifth spot, about two and a half tenths off, so still close in the top five. Uh, on these tricky conditions, but only 12 out of the first group of KA juniors going out to try and learn what they can here from uh, how the track is. And that's the reason why I talk about the LCQ being similar. I think we're going to see this trend continue, especially into some of the classes later in the lineup. If it's going to be damp or a wet tire racetrack, I don't know if you'll see hardly any of the X30 seniors or K100 masters even bother deciding to go out here because yeah. their main events aren't until after the uh, lunch break well into the afternoon. The track should be mostly dry by then. So what are you going to gain from going out in, in this? You're, you're not. You're really not going to learn too much uh, by going out right now. Uh, again, from a driver development side, it's great. Put yourself out no matter what the track is so you can learn if you haven't been in any kind of con uh, wet condition that often in your career. Beyond that fact, you're not learning too much. So from a mechanical side or actually race weekend side uh, mentality, you're just looking to see if the parts stay on that you might have bolted on last night. So they're going to release now the second half of the uh, KA Junior Group. Looks like a decent amount going out in this one. At least a couple big names there top of the screen, like Jackson Wolney on that black and white red speed and Ty Fisher on the lime green TB cart. Um, they waited a moment there behind uh, the Orcelone 850 uh, that led the field 
across the timing loop, uh, or 853 of Jose Martinez. Now looking at the last chance qualifier grid of uh, how they will stack up for uh, that one here in KA Junior, Braden Zerves, uh, he did not go out, at or he did go out, but he looks like he must have went on slicks on that BJR MDR machine because he was 11 and a half seconds off of the quickest time. He's going to start pull uh, and technically in the, in the safe zone of the top two spots for the last chance qualifier later on this morning. Uh, but I think that's probably a smart call and a veteran call because forget about how slow you're going to be right now. You're probably going to want to be on slick tires for that last chance race. I, I don't think the track will be wet enough uh, or stay uh, damp enough that you'll want to go to the wet tires. That crossover is obviously not now, but give it about four to five more warm up sessions. Hopefully, a fair amount of go-karts going on to the racetrack, and uh, you'll want to be on the slicks just barely for uh, that LCQ. Now, for Ty Fisher here, this is probably a session to see if uh, maybe the engine runs a little better. Any other adjustments they might have made to that race lab TV, or again, just continuing to work on his development curve. Send him out there. Let him go feel out the go-kart in a, in a damp, not fully wet, but far from dry racetrack. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, uh, it's going to be, you know, learning for all of these drivers and, and, and striving in different conditions. It's really going to test them and, and, uh, and uh, see how they do in the, uh, in the vast different conditions that we see all weekend long, especially at a place like this, you know, that can, can throw anything at you, especially, you know, Houston being such a, 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 a I would say, a, a, a weather crazy city, right? Where you can expect rain and then the sun will come out later and then it could be probably cold at night. So, you know, anything can happen. Um, doubt we're gonna see any rain later today, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see some clouds uh, cool down the track later. Well, we've been hanging out by the coastline pretty much the entire uh, start to the 2024 national season between down in Homestead, Miami, Orlando, you could say, is a little more landlocked, but it's still in Florida, which is not too far to get to the coast, only an hour away. Not that far here from uh, New Caney, Texas, to get to the coastline. And so all that extra uh, uh, precipitation you get being that close to the ocean, that flows over here. So you're right. I mean, it still could be a wet racetrack. You might learn a little bit uh, of uh, the setup if you do get that kind of pop-up shower before your main event. But I, I like this. You know, throwing a wrench at these guys on the final day, you spent all weekend in the dry. You spent all your heat styling things in for uh, what you expected to be a, a fully dry uh, main event. And you get something a little different in the morning. And, you know, if we get those LCQs wet, if the, if the track stays damp enough for the first main, like K Jr. or Microslift, I like it. I think it, it adds a new element. It tests the drivers a little more than it tests the mechanics even because they're going into the unknown. Um, and it makes it fun to watch from our, uh, you know, perspective because there might be some new names that could uh, join to the top of the boards. Now, Ty Fisher, familiar name at the top, for example, but Michael McGoy, the junior rookie, the Super Nationals winner in Mini Swift, is second at the moment on the RPM Tony card. A little bit off of where Ty's at, about a half second margin to him, but how about that uh, for Michael McGoy? Fausto Arnato was close yesterday. He's now gonna jump to second, uh, and they've uh, obviously gone quicker than the first group. That's to be a little bit expected just because uh, this is the top half from happy hour uh, going out right now. And of course, track is only gonna get faster. I just, I don't know. I, I would have thought that maybe we'd start to see maybe a bit of a dry line form by the third of the fourth session, but we're, it, it feels like we're not making any headway on this racetrack, Caleb. Yeah, it, it still looks super slick for these guys. I mean, you see them there uh, uh, sliding in turns number eight and nine, where you know that, that's one of the highest speed sections. So you definitely don't want that to be dry because you need all the grip you can uh, whenever you go into that double right hander there. Uh, that's uh, the 896, I believe. That could be Davin Roberts, if I'm not mistaken. That's Jackson, Jackson Warney. Warney. That's Jackson Warney, sorry. Uh, they are on the racetrack. You know, so for guys like this, I mean, Warney has a lot of experience. He raced out here two weeks ago, but he, he didn't race here under these conditions because it was an all dry weekend uh, two weekends ago, except for uh, one of the morning sessions that was uh, a little bit wet. But, uh, you know, just kind of throwing, like you said, throwing a wrench at these guys and, 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 and showing why some of these, uh, some of these uh, drivers are the best in the nation. Yeah, Jackson down there in the sixth spot, about a second off the pace of uh, Ty Fisher. And there's a lot that, uh, you know, goes in the guessing game on the mechanical side for the wet setup, especially this kind of intermediate condition when it comes to gearing. Uh, so that could play a bit of a factor. Like you said, uh, it was dry when we were racing and for the broadcast for the Texas Sprint Racing Series two weeks ago, but it was a wet start to the Friday practice. Very wet in the first two sessions, and honestly, still wet up until uh, session number four 
um, where you had to uh, drive through a puddle that completely went across the racetrack. We didn't get that level of overnight rain uh, that we did two weeks prior um, and uh, didn't end up raining on the test weekend last weekend. So uh, for Jackson, he might have one or two sessions here on a slightly damp speed sports racing park. So he looks pretty comfortable, uh, but the, the timesheet doesn't lie. He's still a little bit back uh, from where the rest of the pack is. Ty Fisher, a 65-45. Michael McGoy closing the gap that time. Let's see what Jackson does this time around. Moves up to fourth, seven tenths off, uh, but at least a little bit closer uh, in terms of the, the dampness uh, that they're experiencing on the circuit. So still nothing uh, dry patch-wise that we're seeing, even in the high-speed sections. That'll be the first stuff to really dry up as the tires are uh, really working and, like you said, turns uh, seven and eight. And, ooh, a little bit wide there. That looked like that might have been one of the Barry brothers uh, dropping a tire on the Gillard top corner of the screen. Here's Fausto Ornato, third at the moment, about a tenth and a half off of Ty Fisher. He looks like they've got that thing pretty uh, pretty glued to the surface. Not too much sliding, definitely more wheel input, uh, but uh, just a little four-wheel slide there. Much different than Jose Martinez, who we were following for quite a bit of this session on that Orsolin Racing Tony cart who runs just up the road, and Jose has yet to crack the top 10 uh, here in this group. He's back in 16th, about a second and a half off here in uh, Morning Warp. But they're only gonna get about maybe one more lap, maybe two, as it comes to the end. KA100 Senior currently on deck uh, as the field gets set to go. And you can see just there in the grid, not a lot of go-karts even in the senior class getting ready to go, probably a lot less than KA100 Junior. But as the checkered flies, no big uh, laps there at the end. It's all going to stay pretty stationary. Fisher kind of stabilized at a 65.45. Uh, 42 was his best, but 65.4s uh, was all he could get to. It was about a second quicker than Remy and Dratos. So we are slowly picking up the pace. The sun is out. That'll help. But it's not a typical hot uh, morning here in Houston. It's, uh, it's still... Nice and cool here this morning. I've got my jacket on. Caleb just took his off. Yeah. Uh, granted, we're in, an, in a very nice air-conditioned Speed Sports Racing Park main building. Uh, but even outside, it's really nice, which is a, probably a bit of a, a breath of fresh air for most of the paddock because uh, it was blisteringly hot in the middle of the day yesterday. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was something else, right? I mean, I'm, I'm quite used to it. I'm, uh, I'm a Houston native myself, right? Uh, you know, mornings like this, or you, uh, as a Houston native, you take what you can get, right? So when it's this, <laughs> uh, when it's this cool, this early in the morning, you know, you're like, all right, this is as cool as as, uh, as it's gonna get. Uh, so you know, I I took advantage of that, took my jacket off, and I was like, all right, gonna let the air, you know, breathe and uh, uh, just just uh, enjoy the uh, the cooler air. Yeah, and we say cool. It's still 70 degrees. Yeah. We're expecting to get up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit here today. It's gonna get hot, just not hot too uh, too hot yet. So. On to the track now for your KA100 seniors, the first of the two groups. There's a look at a handful of superstars that have elected to go out here. Blake Nash on slick tires. So already trying to uh, get a feeling uh, for what the uh, track could get to. It's not yet quick enough to go to slicks, uh, so Blake probably won't be anywhere near the quick times as we got problems with Quentin McPherson, or McPherson, sorry, the 979 late to leave the grid. Looks like all good, though. He's going to go out on the wet tires uh, on that Rawlson Performance Group Cosmic. 60-plus entries invaded uh, new Speed Sports Racing Park here this weekend for K100 Senior. As stacked as it's ever been, by far, uh, in my opinion, the most stacked field you'll see in KA outside of the Supercarts USA Super Nationals is Blake pushing the limits here, trying to do everything he can to just get some heat in the tires, get a little bit of grip, but he's going to be at least, I would bet, maybe six to seven seconds off. Alan Isabard right in front of him. Uh, looks like he's gone out on the slick tires as well on that Sodi. So both of them trying different things to uh, find a little bit of grip around here to be able to go. Let's watch him through the S's right here. This is uh, Josh Campbell in front of him parading around. Blake yeah. looks maybe on the edge, but uh, not terrible. Through, through turns two, three, and four. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, the, uh, the, uh, the first five corners aren't the easiest whenever you're on slick tires, right? Because uh, you're having to do a lot of counter steering, a lot of corrections on the go-kart to kind of just keep it on the racetrack. I mean, I've spun many times in wet conditions uh, through there, uh, just trying to learn uh, the track, right? So, uh, I mean, these guys are, are, uh, are doing a great job at it so far, and Blake just, you know, pushing the limits, seeing what he can do, uh, uh, trying to find uh, whatever dry line he can get. So let's look on the left side of the screen here, Caleb. 5.7 seconds uh, right now. So 
closer than I think many would have expected the slicks to be to the wets at this point. You're seeing just a little bit of a lighter surface uh, begin to go, but we haven't seen that fully kind of transition where you see the really light patches on the driving line quite yet. Uh, but Steven Isert, top of the boards. Vinny Miskell is second. I'm sure those guys are on wet tires. Let's see what Blake does on this lap round. He had to get through some traffic to start it, but he kept all four wheels on the black stuff. So cross the line for the 904. Only four seconds off. That's not bad. We're probably maybe two, three good sessions away from being ready to go to the slick tires. We're not far, um, and they're probably not eating up the reins yet, uh, but they're definitely going to be on low, low tire pressure for the wet tires if they're on them at the moment. There's a, a good comparison. That's the 907 of uh, Lydia Small, I believe, right? Or uh, J uh, Jack Small, sorry, uh, right behind. Yeah, so Jack Small right behind uh, teammate there, uh, Blake Nash. Uh, seems to be a little, you know, not much quicker, uh, but, but you know, just uh, right on pace uh, here early on in this one. Well, uh, to get an idea of what the track's like right now, we got one kid that just came off it. Alexander Searle standing by with Race Lab Karting TV car driver, Ty Fisher. Alex? Thank you, boys. Here with the guy who uh, topped the timing sheets there in the K100 Junior warm-up tie. You're on the rain tires. What can you tell us about the racetrack and how close do you think we are to full slicks? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty slippery right now, but I think by X30 warm-up, we should be on the slick tires. We'll try it, see how it works, but we'll see. Now, obviously, with the rain, right, even when it dries up, it's going to wash all the rubber off the racetrack. It'll be, pretty, it'll be a pretty green track for you guys at KA Junior. Do you think that plays into your hands at all, or do you think it's going to be a, a blind race for all you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to play into our hands well, especially being on the TV chassis. I think it has a little bit more grip, and we'll play really well, especially with the new tires. All right, thank you and good luck, Ty. Thank you, Alex. Sawyer Roussel going around while we were away. He's able to get back going uh, on the Team GWR uh, Gillard. Lake Nash is now down to only three seconds off of the wet tires uh, for Steven Isert, who uh, is still slower than where the KA100 Juniors were. They got to the 105.4s, uh, um, and that does, uh, that does track because when you're on wet conditions here, you're not going to have as much horsepower or uh, as much of a benefit, sorry, to the difference in horsepower. Those kids on a uh, uh, restricted engine, but 40 or 30 to 40 pounds lighter on the minimum weight. Um, so the weight difference will make much, uh, won't get out punched by the straight line speed because you just don't get to use all of it uh, when you don't have the grip in the corners. I cert now uh, pumped to second. Vinny Miskell is at a 105.5. That's a tenth off where the KA juniors were. Still, though, Blake Nash within three seconds now. Mark it at maybe two sessions away. And I, I would bet everyone behind Blake here. We saw Jack Small on the slicks. Justin Music probably on slicks. Josh Campbell looked like he was on slicks. Only about maybe five or six drivers right now on wet tires. Steven Isert is one of them uh, and uh, still trying to put a good lap in uh, to move himself back to the top. And it won't really change anything in terms of how you feel about your weekend. But... It, it definitely doesn't hurt your confidence to go top of the boards like Ty did here to kick off the morning. Yeah, definitely uh, no hardware for uh, winning Sunday morning warm-up. But, I mean, uh, like you said, right, a boost of confidence. If you had a bad day yesterday, you could be more confident in the piece that you have coming into uh, today. You know, whether you find yourself in the LCQ or whether you find yourself starting further back in the main event. If you have a good warm-up, you have a good piece under you, you're going to be confident going into the day later. Makes you feel good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing like beating your chest and, uh, you know, Pulling your phone out after the session, looking at the lap times and seeing that you're quickest. Now, problems for Ryan Persing. He is uh, stuck off and looks like he must have collected a cone spinning on the entry to the buckle uh, in turn number 11. But uh, we were, as we were following Isert, right behind him is the privateer Tony Cart of Vinny Mascellas. This weekend, I believe, under the AEM carding tent, but typically you see Vinny and his father on their own. Now, Vinny uh, being able to follow Steven, and then use him as a, a kind of a meter stick of where to break and then go a little bit deeper or change the line a bit, I think is part of the reason why the 984 has such a massive gap uh, because he's half a second quicker than the Sodi Racing USA machine in front of him. So cross the line, does he go any better on this final lap around? He will not. No change for Vinny, a 65-5, he'll end there. There's Connor Ferris across the line. Slick tires for him. There is the 912, Charles Ropke on the wets on that Franklin Motorsports Merlin. Autumn Fisher on wets on the Race Lab karting Villeneuve cart. 
And with a checkered flying here for the first of two groups, a KA senior will take this moment to step away, folks. We return. We back with the other half of the group and warm-ups rolling through before the last chance qualifiers get underway here in Houston. Well, we had the sun, it has gone away, and uh, we just got reports of uh, a little bit uh, of rain kind of coming back. Just a bit of sprinkling here this morning. There's the sun peeking out back behind the clouds again with a little bit of uh, brightness coming back into the shot. Uh, but we may be further away from that crossover. Now, Blake Nash ended 2.3 seconds off of Vinny Miskellis' time. Steven Miller there on, on screen, his teammate on slick tires. He'll start a bit slower. When he can build some heat in those things, he might be decent see a few of the cards coming behind him also on slicks i don't know if anyone in the second group went out on the wets looks like maybe the card at the front of that line the gillard might be on uh, wet tires colin lloyd fernando luke top of the screen they're on slicks as well and um, judging just off of the eye uh the naked eye test here caleb i don't see the track with any standing water but i'm still not seeing any patches uh, of lightness on the line quite yet forming. It's definitely going to pick up temperature pretty quickly. Let's see if we can see anything here. Looks maybe a little bit light in the kink uh, going through. And there's maybe a couple uh, on the inside of the buckle, but not a lot yet. So um, I'm curious if uh, if by the time we get to X30 Junior, when Ty was thinking that might be quicker to go to the slick tires, I think you'll see maybe more go to them. Lucas Zabo. I would bet he's probably on the wets there. He just jumped up to fourth on his outlap. So uh, probably uh, a good uh, gauge for this uh, session will be comparing Zabo to the likes of uh, Stephen Miller and company of, of where they kind of gauge at. Colin Lloyd, five seconds off there on the opening lap uh, around. Down into the corner, that's the 968. And then Chase Buscalia. Buscalia looks like he might be on the wet tires behind him there. Uh, another one of the Sodi machines probably on uh, dries. Here we go. Let's go down and uh, hear from what the track's like on slicks. Blake Nash giving us a good show of how to keep it on the dark stuff even when you don't have the grip to do it. Alex? Thank you, Xander. Blake, uh, one, of the, one of the many drivers out there on the slick tires, one of the quickest guys on the slick tires. Nonetheless, two seconds off the pace, uh, but the track looks to be improving. What can you tell us about the racetrack? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously the, the first couple of laps were uh, like a little tricky. It was like still pretty damp, so I was kind of sliding all over the place. But yeah, for sure, by the end of the session, it was starting to get grip. Um, mostly in like the, the high speed infield section, it was I could feel the grip starting to, to come in. But uh, yeah, for sure, the first section still is, is still damp. I think by the time we get to the LCQs, though, for most drivers, it'll be dry. Now, heading into the future races, nonetheless, even if the water is off the racetrack, it'll be a green racetrack for you guys, and you're one of the first future races out there. So what can you expect, and how does that play into your hands? 
I think honestly it'll be better for the cart that or for the way that my cart is, is set up now. Um, Thursday we were really fast, and uh, unfortunately yesterday and we were kind of struggling a bit with with how greasy the track got. So I think with a greener track, our our cart seems to handle a little bit better. Um, so yeah, maybe just adding a little bit more front grip, just tuning the gear to to uh, to fit that um, change. But I think nonetheless we should be good. Thank you, Blake. Thank you. There you hear it from Blake Nash, and that's that's the big thing that they're going to be uh, guessing on right now is the gearing uh, for the different conditions uh, because uh, we know that when we get to the LCQs, it'll probably be dry. When we get to the end of the warm-ups, it'll be close to it as well. Uh, but you're not going to be able to you're not going to want to run the same uh, gear ratio you ran with the fully dry racetrack at the end of the day yesterday. Stephen Miller's closing up the gap now. He's gotten to Blake Nash's pace. Lucas Zabo about three tenths off of Vinny Miskellis. And uh, let's follow a lap around here with the 973 as he heads on the back stretch and further back. Here's Colin Lloyd as well. Little bit sideways through turns four and five. Yeah, not too much though. Uh, let's see what it looks like down the back straightaway there for Colin Lloyd. Uh, seems to be avoiding uh, the uh, inside of the racetrack there. Uh, the curbs can get super slick around this place as well. I mean, the outside curb there on turn number six is, is, is very, very uh, slippery uh, when it's wet. Um, so, uh, and, and then in this double right-hander, I mean, taking all that curb there, I mean, the, the, those style of curbs there uh, uh, help a lot to, to kind of get the cart turned. So in terms of the one, two, and three, I wouldn't be surprised to see drivers, you know, kind of use up that curb to try and help get the cart turned. Well, you saw that with Blake Nash, right? You're using the inside curbs to, to rotate it. Uh, you're staying off the outside ones. Uh, any of the flat curbs, they're not going to help you. That paint's going to be more slippery than the asphalt, but... Uh, Collins taking more of what would you uh, what you would consider kind of a traditional rain line going around the outside of the racetrack. You're avoiding the rubber because the rubber that uh, adds grip when the track is dry removes grip uh, when it is wet. Uh, but through the S's for Colin Lloyd's interim S Cart Republic, he's knocked it down to 2.4 off. Stephen Miller to two seconds off, still slower than the wet tires, not terribly uh, far off. This could be very interesting if things don't change when we get to the KALCQ. In, uh, in both junior and in senior, it could be borderline on the call of what you do uh, to the go-kart. Uh, which tires do you put on? What gear you put on? You're going to maybe pull one or two teeth off from what you ran in the warm-up. But beyond that, what setup do you want to try and uh, put on that thing to try and race your way in? Because only the best two are going to make it out. 44 drivers transferred through to the main here in K Senior. Uh, and then uh, two more to make a 46-driver grid off of the last chance race that's coming up uh, later on this morning. Those races are slated to go just past top of the hour. Uh, I believe at uh, 9.15 they'll go green uh, with the K.A. Junior last chance race. We're at 8.40 a.m. Central Time uh, here in the, the center of this doubleheader kart chaser weekend. We've been live all weekend for the U.S. Pro Kart Series kicking things off Friday afternoon with happy hour and with qualifying yesterday. Had the second round of the 2024 Amp Kart Championship Series. 43 drivers. Uh, ran in 206 senior over 100 and I believe 40 or 50 entries for the club race next week It'll be live as well for the cup carts North America South Division stop uh, That series is first ever trip the first ever really touring series to head to Atlanta Motorsports Park uh, In its history uh, is going to be fun to watch on car chaser. Of course, we've got the Maxis uh, Max Daddy dirt oval race that'll be coming your way uh, that Saturday as well uh, as uh, another round of the Whiteland Raceway Park Indy Karting Challenge um, and the opening round of the 2024 Motorsports Car uh, Country Club of Cincinnati uh, Club Karting uh, Pro-Am Championship. Four races next weekend, two this weekend. Today, though, all about the U.S. Pro Kart Series. Nothing else uh, on your screen, and uh, uh, there's uh, plenty of racing to go around. This class uh, was one of the more tame ones, I would say, yesterday, Caleb. Would that be an accurate statement based on how the three heats went for X30 Junior? Yeah, no, for sure. A, a, a very, very tame uh, a day so far, and it was a clean sweep on the day for uh, for Chico Brown yesterday. Uh, and pretty much it's been like that all weekend, right? And not many people have been able to challenge him. I mean, Ardiles was close uh, at, at, at one stage of the race. Uh, Vinamontian was close as well, but just nobody like really able to challenge uh, Chico Brown uh, yesterday, so he was able to, you know, uh, stay out at the front of this X30 Junior class. Uh, tame, very, uh, a lot of respect in this class because there's only 20 drivers, only 21 around there. Um, so, you know, these drivers know each other, they race each other so often. Uh, I mean, I mentioned yesterday, right, some of these drivers even race each other six times 
uh, throughout the day uh, yesterday. Uh, they reached her six times yesterday, uh, you know, in XRB Junior and in KA uh, Junior. So, um, you know, they have a lot of experience driving with each other, a lot of respect. So it was pretty tame, and Chico Brown uh, was a kid out in front. Ooh, big off there to uh, start the session for the 746 of uh, Edgar Rodriguez. Uh, he's on the Orioli Kart Performance OTK. Uh, we were following uh, Chase Cassie at Lee for a minute. Here's a look at the kid that'll lead us to green later this afternoon. Chico Brown in the 768. Rawlison Performance Group Cosmic. Looks like they've sent uh, him out on slick tires as well as his teammate Diego Ardiles and most in the group. I'm curious if any of the X30 Juniors elected to go to the wets because uh, they're definitely struggling for grip, but it's close right now to that uh, elusive crossover moment. And uh, I don't think uh, many may have gone to uh, wets, if at all. So we'll, we'll find that when they get the first lap at speed uh, recorded when they come back around to the line. They've got times coming right now. That's their time just leaving the pit lane. Uh, no speed as Chico, little sideways there, heading on the back stretch uh, with uh, one of the super tuned Tony Carts going along and uh, looking to the inside. And I think that is maybe Nathan Dupuy. That's the seven, no, that's sorry, uh, uh, Gonzalez there. Uh, Matias Gonzalez in the 700. There's Davin Roberts on the Ryan Perry Motorsport Tony Kart. He was in the mix of it uh, yesterday in KA100 Junior. Still needed a little more to fight for the lead and the win in X30 Junior, but he's had a pretty stout weekend. I uh, caught him at the end of the day yesterday. He said, if I win this weekend, I'm not spinning after the line, Xander. So uh, got that out of the way <laughs> from uh, his win back in Orlando. No more self spins for him as we had one buried down there into turn number 11. You can only see the top of that driver's helmet. I think that maybe one of the RPGs here, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think it is one of the RPGs there. Wow. That's uh, buried under there. And that's actually very good uh, barrier placement there because there's a, it's almost of a ditch and there's a big concrete part uh, that goes under there uh, to, to drain all the water off the racetrack. So very good ba uh, barrier placement here as uh, that driver uh, stuck there Cole in the ditch. Medeiros, it yeah. looks like, in the 707. So he had just got his first lap in and that's all he's gonna get here in warm up. That, that cart is way off uh, the racetrack there. Yeah, so uh, unfortunate there for uh, Cole Medeiros, who finds himself out of the session here early in this one. His teammate, though, Chico Brown, still out there on the racetrack. Not quickest, finds himself in 12th. It's McGoy who currently uh, is quickest on the racetrack in his Ryan Perry Motorsports machine. Kim's going to be in third. Davin Roberts is going to be 10th here at the moment. All these drivers still on slick tires, trying to find the lines, trying to find, you know, confidence around this racetrack on what's going to be you know, uh, a toss-up later today. Uh, still not sure. Um, uh, I mean, we were expecting, right, two sessions uh, for it to be dry. As you see, uh, the RPG teammates go there side-by-side uh, -side there for a second, and our dealer is able to stay ahead. But, oh, wow, Chico Brown uh, very uh, goes very wide there on the exit of the boot, and uh, seems like having a little bit fun there on a slip race track. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, definitely... Uh Fun is a good word for it right now. Nothing matters like you, like we've talked about. Warm-up is just checking out everything on the go-kart. Only half the class has gone out. Jackson Lully didn't go out, neither did David Ramirez. Victor de Allen car, Enzo Vidmontienz kept his cart in the pit lane as well. Only 12 of the 20 X30 juniors have elected to even uh, attempt to try and drive here in the warm-up session. Chico and Diego back and forth, playing around here in the damp conditions through turns uh, eight and nine. And we've still got a little bit of time left here before we get to racing action for those joining us here in the morning. We've got three more groups that will run for warm-up. Mini Swift will be next. There's 40 on the entry list. Uh, I would bet somewhere around maybe 25 to 30 go out for the warm-up. KA Master has 15 on the list. We'll see if any of them go out. The same for X30 Senior because this is the last class that runs before the lunch break. There's a break in the middle of the main events this afternoon and then three classes run right after it. So for uh, Mini Swift, KA Master, and X30 Pro Senior. I mean, there there is nothing even remotely close to what this track condition is going to look like um, for uh, uh, their race with how late in the day they're set to go if we stay dry all day. We've still got that small chance of uh, something coming and messing things up. Davin Roberts there on screen. Right behind him is one of the Zanella Racing uh, Tony carts. That is Alexander Vanchev in the 706. He's fifth right now. Uh, Roberts is down in the eighth. Both of them pretty close on time, though, about two seconds off of Michael McGoy uh, at a 63-43. I, I would imagine, oh, big off for one of the quickest, Diego Ardiles, a little bit too quick there through the kink. 
He's going to uh, rough ride it through the mud there coming out of turn 10 all the way over to turn number 11. So Diego Ardiles in the 793 with a big off here pushing the limits. Yeah, off track excursion there for Diego Ardiles. Uh, but he's able to get going again, so uh, not too bad uh, there for Diego Ardiles, who's uh, there right behind one of the Zanella racing machines. I believe that's uh, Vanchev there on the racetrack. Uh, but there's Diego Ardiles able to get going in with uh, a lot of cleaning of the tires uh, here for uh, Ardiles after, you know, getting him really dirty after going off there in the belt buckle. So unfortunate there for Ardiles, but he's able to get going again. Just a little bit of a, of a scare and like our uh, our old friend Henry uh, would say, right, uh, maybe, maybe a change of underwear as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, for him in uh, that one. So, uh, yeah, as uh, the last few... Laps come in. He's got a clean, uh, uh, clean go kart now. Maybe one more good lap for Diego could move him a little higher up the boards. He sits ninth here in warm up of the 12 uh, that have turned laps so far. Cole Medeiros, obviously, he's uh, way off because he only got the out lap in before going off the racetrack into 11. That'll trigger a, a cart recovery, I believe, uh, before this uh, the next session rolls with Mini Swift. Change at the top. Looks like the slick tires are finally coming in. Chico Brown fastest at a 63 flat. Took him all session to figure it out. Turner ends on top in warm up. Diego gets a decent lap there on the final run through. Edgar Rodriguez with a good lap on the 746. Ty Fisher about to cross the line. He said he was going to try the slick tires on the race lap TV. Felt pretty confident that it would have the grip to be good. And uh, he ends in the seventh spot there on the last lap, 64 96 for Turner Brown. Mini Swift's going to roll here in a moment, folks. Ages 8 to 12 years old, uh, the 100 to 199 range, and the unrestricted version of the Micros looks like a decently full grid. You're getting set to go, and we return. So you finally want to get behind the wheel, huh? Yeah, I've been shooting for three years, and I've never got to drive. Well, you're going to need some more gear than just your helmet. Why don't you go to shopakr.com? They got their inventory online, and they'll ship it the same day if you order before 5.30 p.m. Eastern. They got shoes? Yep. Gloves? Yep. Rim protectors? Got those too. Can they make me go fast? No. Here at Acceleration Kart Racing, we've got everything you need to get on track. What happens next? Well, that's on you. Check us out online at shopakr.com. Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. We're based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. Study show that even the best current generation of simulators only convince 50% of the human brain that they are real. Here at SimCraft, that just isn't realistic enough. Developed to offer the most realistic karting sim experience in the world, all testing has shown that the physics engine used in SimCraft's Grid 1 model convinces 90% of the human brain that you are actually on track. Now that is the real deal. Well, howdy and welcome back to Houston's High Speed Playground Speed Sports Racing Park as Sawyer Chambers uh, has gone around there in the belt buckle, shakes his head, not too happy uh, so far. Nor an early morning uh, here today, 8.52 a.m. Central Time here, uh, Xander. 
Uh, we uh, we got here at the racetrack uh, bright and early, uh, very humid days so far, and for all these kids, uh, seem to be uh, doing a great job so far to keep it on the black stuff, except for uh, young Sawyer Chambers, who unfortunately went around there. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, he wasn't the only one to have a little spin on the outlap. Uh, they're uh, just about two laps into the session right now, so um, that's uh, partly why uh, he's saying everyone's doing a good job. We only caught one, so apologies to Sawyer. He wasn't the only one to make a little little bobble, just the first one that got caught on the uh, broadcast. But uh, just getting going with lap times for everybody here in warm-up. A good amount of the class has gone out. Um, at least about 25, it appears, have uh, gone to turn a time in. So as they uh, head down to uh, the buckle, a uh, pack of about maybe seven or eight. Oh, oh, we got two spinners there at the end of the back straightaway. Both into the, oh, that's Sawyer again. One of the SLA machines, I believe. One of the SLA Cart Republics there. So uh, unfortunate so far uh, for, uh, for those couple of drivers. Uh, there on your screen is Bergman, Tucker Treeb, and uh, one of the Team Ferris racing machines here, all uh, making their way out onto the racetrack. Maxwell Macha as well. Yesterday, though, uh, it was uh, it was a toss-up between who was going to win uh, these heat races. Marco Samet was a uh, driver who put it on the pole position here in this class, in the Minnesota class. Orbezo took heat number one. Royce Vega took heat number two. And Ashton Woon took the third heat yesterday as uh, the 120 off of the racetrack there as well. That's uh, Braden Wagner, uh, unfortunately. But it's been a toss-up in this Minnesota class all weekend long, Xander, and uh, anybody's game. Oh, wow, big spinner. Colton Schneegenberg just about kissed the red and white plastic barriers on the outside of turn six, taking the uh, escape rope, but uh, luckily kept it on the black, was able to just drive back up, and uh, that's the best way to spin it, at least stay on the asphalt here, Caleb. He didn't go off into the dirt or anything, so good, good job for Colton uh, making up for that big moment there. And We've got one other spun, and looks like maybe stalled out one of the Benicks has gone around entering the boot. That is the 146. It is a cluttered racetrack. And that is Turiaga. Aldo Turiaga around entering the boot. And uh, either way, uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on the action for you of how things are going. Let's go down and hear what the track looks like at the moment from Rawls and Performance Group's own Chico Brown. He starts pole today in X30 Junior. Thank you, Xander. Yeah, Chico. Decided to have some fun in the rain there. Uh, a lot of your competitors didn't go out. Walk me through your decision to go out there for warm up. Um, you know, I think we went out there just to test for KA and see how it is. Because I mean, the track's going to change, obviously, but it's a good. Um, it's good to get a good understanding. And I mean, yeah, I mean, it gave me a lot of confidence just going out there. Um, and I'm and I'm sure it'll probably help me for the KA man. Yeah, you're on slicks. You actually you came off track. You said I don't know how it went purple. Uh, what can you tell us about the racetrack right now? <laughs> It's wet. Uh, it's really wet, and you got to be creative. Um, it, I was just—I didn't even—I was just throwing different lines out, seeing what was fast and what was not. And I—I I, I, I don't know. I just came in. I was having fun out there. Yeah. Yesterday, you had six heat races between the two classes. Uh, physically, how are you holding up, and are you prepared to hold on for uh, two long feature races today? Um, I'm holding up good. Got a good night's sleep last night. That's for sure. Fell asleep at like eight. Um, six races was a lot. And, I mean, yeah, it's going to be really physical today, and I'm, I think it'll help because I'll be up on the wheel with the battling. All right, good luck, Turner. Thank you. Always fun to talk to Turner Brown, one of uh, uh, our favorite kids to interview just because of uh, how easy it is to tell what's on his mind. Uh, he's, uh, like, uh, like we expected, having a good uh, amount of yeah. fun out there and a great point of getting creative, throwing uh, anything you can at it and trying different lines uh, every single lap as the track develops and the, the tires get some heat in them. Um, one other point that he made in that interview to touch on, Caleb, that you can touch on as well uh, for both of us being behind the wheel, it's so much easier to stay motivated and uh, forget that you're tired or not feel tired when you're in the pack battling or especially if you're hunting somebody down versus driving by yourself. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, a whole different adrenaline, right? Whenever you're driving in a, in a pack and then especially battling uh, for the lead around this place, right? You have to be on your toes. You have to be uh, there all the time and you know whenever you're doing laps all out there on your own you know you're not feeling the adrenaline you kind of think more of how tired you're feeling or, or or how physical the track may be but whenever you're in a pack you uh, you, you get a, a whole different adrenaline a whole different energy uh, whenever you're back behind the wheel and, and, and you know pack racing the entire time and, 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 and fighting and trying to take whatever you can get well a 67-66 for Simon Klein on the SLA Kart Racing Kart Republic has him fastest 
uh, in the mini soap class. A, a definitely mixed bag of drivers that were up front yesterday in the dry uh, to the ones that were quick there. Now, not all of them uh, going out for the warm-up session, but about 30 of the 40 did. Chambers, granted, we caught Sawyer with a few spins. He ends up with a good time. That puts him second overall. Benja Fernandez third. Bashi Jimenez, John John McClellan, Ashton Woon, Royce Vega, Pasha Ali, Liam Nachawati. Maxwell Macha has had a, a doozy of a weekend. Uh, a absolutely destroyed go-kart in heat number three uh, with the massive crash. That pack got to 12 carts deep, and then it all uh, came crashing down in the S's at the uh, start of a lap. Took out multiple drivers um, from the uh, main group that has changed our starting lineup a little bit. Uh, for where the pace would have put them uh, for the main later today. Now, this class hasn't seen too much. Carnage did get a good battle uh, in the uh, final heat race of the weekend. Martin Stone looked like he was kind of taking it easy, cruising around there to finish fourth because he'd already pretty much clinched the pole by sweeping both heats uh, earlier on in the day. Um, so I don't know if he's going to have more competition on his hands when we get to race them later this afternoon or if he was keeping his cards a bit close to the chest because you know racers especially with the experience of this masters class 30 years of age and older they know how to play the game uh, they've been doing it some of them their entire life longer than uh, the many of kids have even been alive so a good amount of them probably not going to go for uh, the warm session at least a few will like the angels wonder tom gerstner on the magic cart there's Adam Kreppen going out for warm-up. We saw Diego Rodriguez up the road as well. So a handful, including Kreppen, who raced inside the top five yesterday, have decided to go and feel out the racetrack uh, and uh, all giving each other quite a bit of space. You saw Tom waving his hand, trying to uh, uh, let everybody know that he's going to take it nice and slow here in this warm-up. There's Lorenzo Mardan. Uh, was talking uh, a bit with him earlier this weekend, and for a guy that ran at the front, fought for wins, got some wins last year, this is below the standard of what he probably expects of himself to kick off the 2024 U.S. Pro Card Series uh, because running fourth, running fifth, that might be good for some. For Larry, that's not good enough. I'm sure he probably took a good stab at uh, whatever he feels like he needs more out of on that uh, K100 Techno Kart last night and is probably feeling out a bit of that change right now to see if he can close the gap to the OTKs in front of him. Martin Stone on the Ryan Perry Motorsport Tony Kart. And a big credit to Miguel Mir on the Orsalon racing machine because uh, how sporty he looked throughout. It was a, a slow progression, it felt like. Heat one, he was a little better. Heat two, even a little better than that. And then the final heat, obviously, he was racing. He was able to get to the lead multiple times and uh, try to control the race a bit. Yeah, he, ended, uh, uh, he even ended up winning that heat race, uh, that, that, uh, that third heat race uh, for Miguel Mir. Uh, right, so I mean, and like you said, he was quick and happy hour continuing with Martin Stone, and then it's been an uphill climb uh, the entire weekend for Miguel Mir, who, who, who tried to get up to the front uh, with Martin Stone in a couple of heat races yesterday. Wasn't able to get it done in the first two, but in the third one, uh, third time's a charm, right? So for Miguel Mir, he was able to get it done in the third one. For Pierce Baldus as well, the, um, the uh, road racer turned uh, sprint cart uh, racer here. We talked to, to him earlier this week. He said he was learning a lot this weekend. Uh, but he's learning up at the front, right? He's been in the top two, top three all weekend long. Uh, you know, had a, has had a great showing so far uh, uh, this uh, this weekend here at Speed Sports Racing Park. And, I mean, he's uh, he's uh, doing really good in his high five uh, red speed. Well, four out of the five uh, have uh, not gone out so far uh, that were the main five from yesterday. Baldus, pit lane. Miguel Mayer sitting out. Nicky Coelho sitting out. And Martin Stone sitting out. Only seven of our 15 KA Masters have hit the racetrack. And the only one remaining uh, out of that kind of leading quintet, Adam Kreppen, is your quickest man on the uh, opening lap at a 66.515. Here's Diego Rodriguez, the captain of the Alessandro's Racing Group, uh, with uh, driving for Mike Rollison and the Rollison Performance Group Cosmic Team this weekend, because it's a, quite a haul from Miami, Florida uh, to Houston, Texas. So I think he kept his own race rig at home, flew in, brought his helmet, and uh, he was not where he probably was happy with yesterday, but he wasn't terribly far off. That second group in KA Master was uh, only maybe two or three tenths away from being able to fight with the likes of Kreppen at the front. Now, in this session, he's a little further back, seven tenths off. Kreppen definitely looks like he's a little more uh, crept up at the moment as he's already coming into frame, closing the gap to the 426. Let's see what kind of lap Adam puts in that time. 65-15, six tenths clear of uh, Diego and 
over a second clear, Laurentiu Mardin. Adam Kreppen really excelling here in these damp conditions. K Master is the second to last group, by the way, folks, for those watching our coverage here for the morning. Uh, after this, we'll have X30 Pro Senior warm up. Then we'll switch to the KC Premium member live stream for the last chance qualifiers and main events. So two more, uh, one and a half classes left in the practice sessions this morning. Uh, and then it's finally time to get back to racing with last chance qualifiers for KA Senior and KA Junior. There's uh, Kreppen going by on Diego. Adam Kreppen's got uh, one of the cooler stories in the paddock. You'll see on the back of his suit, it says Bob's son. Well, Bob Kreppen is the guy that uh, you don't want to see in the scale line. He's the penalty steward most of the time, checking bumpers or handing out slips. Uh, he's hanging out in the tech area. And uh, the nice part when your dad works for the series, Adam gets a cool little pit spot because uh, Bob's got to be nearby. So uh, they are right by the uh, front entrance. And to me, outside of all that, uh, of those two staying together, even into Masters, uh, having, making this a family affair. It's a privateer effort. It's one of the smallest trailers you'll find here in the pits, and uh, it's a fully independent deal. Adam was fighting the good fight, even at his age, uh, just a couple years ago, still uh, running in KA Senior against all the young bucks. But eventually, he's like, you know what? I need to go where the rest of the guys that look like me, walk like me, and uh, uh, are, have the same amount of years on this earth in KA Master. And he's been fighting towards the lead all weekend, having a good time, and probably tearing up a lot less parts uh, than that KA senior class, because that final heat for them, it looked wild, Caleb. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a, a wild, wild day of racing all day yesterday in between uh, that KA 100 senior class. But I mean, uh, for, for Kreppen, right? I mean, uh, privateer this weekend, one of the only privateers in this uh, Masters uh, class. The only privateer. Yeah, the you only, can see all yeah, the team yeah, logos yeah, right yeah, there. The He's privateer. the only one with no logo next to it. Just, uh, just by himself on that Gillard. Yeah, and I mean, you were uh, uh, two days ago. You were talking about, you know, the requirements for this KA100 <laughs> Masters class that uh, that went a little viral on social media. Why don't you take us through it again, Xander? Right? Okay, this, like this, this comes from Mike Geeson, right? And talking about the Masters kind of uh, uh, renaissance that we're seeing across the uh, social media platforms. He's like, you know, I've been thinking about this because the Masters class it's morphed a lot over the years. Started at 45 and over, then 40 and over, then 35, then 32, then 30, and now there's the exception for the heavier uh, drivers at 15 and over, which I think for the most part is fine. But uh, Mike's, Mike's joke was, look, you gotta be either married or divorced, have kids in high school or already out of high school and past it. Um, and uh, everything that you bring to the racetrack needs to be able to fit in the back of a pickup truck. So by that standard, the only one that qualifies is, uh, well, Adam doesn't have kids in high school. So I guess by that count, he, he doesn't qualify, but yeah. he definitely does qualify. And you only have to meet one. So he does qualify with all the contents. They could probably fit that go-kart and all of his parts into the back of a pickup truck. So by that count, Adam is the only one allowed to run Masters if you go off of all that, uh, at least for that part of the requirement. But uh, yeah, these are guys that go back to work on Monday. Everything's about uh, having a good time, having fun. You don't hear them complaining about prize money. They just want to go out, drive their go-kart, and uh, make it a fun weekend experience. And um, you know what? They're probably having some of the most fun because there's not that much crashing that's gone on in their group yeah. through three heat races. Can't say the same for most of the other classes right now. We've seen a lot of do-or-die moves at one point or another, it feels like, in every other division. Even the one coming up next, uh, the heavy hitters, the X30 Pro Seniors that are down on the grid. We're seeing what looks to be a, a pretty dry grid area now, and the racetrack is definitely closing in on times. It's based on what Kreppen just hit there, probably about, I would say, five seconds off. Uh, from where they were yesterday. Uh, looking in the 56s uh, for K Masters, maybe more like six seconds off. Um, but definitely to the slick tires now. We'll be on slicks for that LCQ. I'm curious how much that, uh, if we'll see any guys elect to stay on the scuffs because, you know, new tires take a few laps to wear in. Eventually they'll be quicker, but on a dry racetrack with a lot of heat, it doesn't take that long. But with the track still being damp like this, if you have to use your new your second setup in the LCQ, you're obviously at a major disadvantage uh, for the main event. But when only two make it out and you start with 21, you need every advantage you get. So you want to go on the news. I'm just thinking maybe some guys might try to risk it and, and stay on their scuffs uh, for either junior or senior just because you're not going to benefit going brand new rubber when the track is damp like this. Yeah, no, uh, for sure, right? And, and like you said, only two drivers making it in, but uh, there's a lot of big names in that LCQ field in the KA100 senior class uh, that's coming up uh, in, uh, in, in, in some moments uh, here. But a lot of big names, you know, trying to race their way in. 
and some big names here uh, in this one. It's been all about Ryan Norberg here in the X30 Pro class, uh, who I don't think uh, went out here for, uh, for his morning warm-up to Tulio, uh, Carr, Keeble all out there. I mean, we saw issues for Keeble all day yesterday with uh, with the engine issues. I mean, for that entire Sodi team, right? Uh, just uh, engine issues, uh, just a little bit down on power, trying to, you know, it, it's been uh, an uphill battle the entire way through. Uh, for Keeble and, and Haynes all weekend long, trying to find the pace uh, to contend uh, to get into the top five here, Xander. He did find it in the final heat, yeah. though, and really in that second one we did the engine changes. That was a big dive from Harley on Santiago Fernandez. Him and Brandon Carr, this is uh, a bit of a taste of home with uh, how often it rains uh, almost more than they get dry racing uh, back in the United Kingdom. Uh, but uh, for Harley Keeble, he was one of two, I would say, that looked like they might have had speed to contend with Flying Ryan yesterday. The other one being Austin Garrison. Both of them having to start deep in the field. You heard it from Austin in his post-race interview yesterday afternoon that, you know, having to fight through the field, you lose a lot of time and you work the tires a little more. They're gonna be on a clean slate here for the main event. Uh, Austin's gonna start up in the third spot right behind Donovan Bonilla, who had a, a very good final heat race and a couple of decent ones. Keeble's gonna start back in the 10th position. So that puts him, uh, probably on the back foot and having to use up uh, his rubber a little bit to get through the pack. Brandon Carr starts up the road in the seventh spot for the main later today. And he had, uh, I felt like uh, a better heat to start uh, the uh, Saturday run, but didn't look as strong by the time we got to the afternoon. Now that'll be around, that'll be too late uh, compared to when the mains run. You brought up the great point yesterday. Heat two will be similar in uh, the time of day definitely a different racetrack now with the damp uh, dampness and all the rain that came last night it'll be dried up for them but probably less grip i would think uh i don't know if it was enough uh water to, to wash the rubber off as harley keeble's got a problem it looks like slowing here at the end of the front stretch and that's not good news for the Sodi racing usa boys because they probably thought that they had all their problems in gremlins solved but Harley Keeble coming to a halt on the outside of turn number four here in warm-up. That's a developing story right there for one driver that we thought might have had a piece to be able to fight for the win. Um, that's a, a big blow to confidence. We were talking earlier about what it what it does to go quickest in warm-up. There's no trophy, but it feels good to see yourself top of the pylon. This is the worst case scenario. Yeah. There, now you're gonna go into the main just hoping your piece stays together. Yeah, so uh, unfortunate there, and 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 for the confidence as well of Harley Keeble, right? Uh, you know, uh, not being able to even finish the warm-up session uh, here in this one, uh, and teammate Don Haynes going to see his uh, his um, his teammate there of uh, of Keeble there on the exit of turn number three. Uh, so you know, issues early on, Gremlins early on uh, for the Saudi Racing USA team uh, in Harley Keeble's uh, cart. Uh, Garduno currently top of the timing screens in his Wallace and Performance Group Cosmic. Yeah, how about that? His teammates haven't gone out, or a couple of them at least. Henry Lapard has. Ryan Norberg has not. Donovan Mania is not out there. Gia Cicero is not out there. So the fastest three RPG drivers uh, have stayed in the pit lane. So have the two TB carts of Alex Stanfield and Christian Miles. Peyton Phillips also has kept his X30 senior high five performance, Tony Cart, uh, in the uh, tent. But the rest of the pack out there, Paulie Massimino, they took a big swing at his BJR MDR LN cart. Said he needed that a uh, little more front turn. Just was having to put a lot of wheel input uh, into the car uh, in the uh, end of the day yesterday. So a major swing at the setup for him. They hadn't done a lot because he was pretty happy with the go-kart through practice and qualifying. And the speed was close. Uh, but now uh, into Sunday, they've taken a big stab to try and get the last bit they need to, to fight for a podium and potentially a race win. At the moment, Massimino is sixth in a, in a session that, again, doesn't matter. It won't be too much of an accurate read for later today. Uh, but he might be feeling a little bit of those changes. And you know that as a driver going into uh, the session that, you know, if, if you can guess where the track's going to be, you kind of want to be free right now. You know, you're not trying to go and have the fastest car and warm up, but you do want to... I think they are fast enough, the track's close enough, you can feel out if that change changed the handling of the go-kart enough to where you think when the track's gonna be good enough, uh, what the track's gonna look like in your main, it's gonna be good for that. Uh, I, I've been in that position plenty of times where you kinda have to go, all right, yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna look good on the timesheets and warm-up, but we made the change that we needed, and then sure enough, the race comes around and it's exactly what you hope for. You, you plan for that, so uh, for Brandon Carr being quickest, that's a great feeling. Brandon Lemke, second quickest right there with him. 
That's good too. Or ADT or Garduno going way faster than everyone. Uh, that's the best, but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they're learning everything they can at warm. They might just have uh, the better uh, setup for the conditions right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it seems like Massimino is uh, really set up for these conditions. Lemke as well, you know, uh, seems to be flying here early in this one. There's Haynes looking for a move on Fernandez. He gets it done in Switchback City. Uh, but a lot of drivers uh, out here on the racetrack, uh, more than I expected to see, uh, honestly. Uh, there's ADT uh, who just, you know, and, and, and uphill climb for him as well, you know, and just hasn't really had the pace uh, so far this weekend uh, to really contend uh, with even the top five uh, here. Uh, you know, has been in there, just, just hasn't really been able to challenge uh, uh, the, the likes of, uh, of Norberg or, or Austin Garrison here. Yeah, and, uh, you know, this is uh, still a, a, you know, uh, an engine program in its infancy is the checkered waves for Inter MS. Uh, Franco Crivelli, one of the newer engine builders on the block here in the States, they debuted uh, really strong at the Scusa Super Nationals on a track layout that most said was probably the most engine dependent layout in uh, a few years. Uh, the racing was fantastic from our uh, vantage point, and uh, ADT started on the front row in a stacked X30 Pro field of uh, upwards of 70 drivers on the entry list uh, back in November. But this weekend, he said they're still missing a little bit uh, horsepower-wise. So he says he feels pretty good with that interim S Kart Republic, but the R&D, uh, to be only six months in as good as they are, is definitely uh, you know something to be proud of. Uh, but I think it's still probably a moving target for them to, uh, you know, make the changes. How about Josh Holtz, by the way, as well as Christian Garduno? We talked about Garduno top of the boards. Josh Holtz with a good lap there at the very end uh, to jump to second. So uh, for the man that's been hovering the top ten most of this weekend, Josh Holtz, uh, a little confidence boost there, P2 in warm-up. The KA Junior LCQ is on the grid, folks. We're going to switch over to the KC Premium screen, and when we return, it's racing time to send uh, two drivers into the big dance and the rest of them to the sidelines to watch.